Hi, I'm Antricia. And I'm Carolyn. Welcome to The Color of Success, where we showcase, motivate, celebrate culture, creativity, and success of ordinary people, and we discuss real life issues that's important to you. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. And we would like to also welcome back our guest, the original Freeway Rick Ross. Thank you for having me back. Thanks for <laughs> coming back. Thanks for letting us keep <laughs> yes. you. Thank you so much. Thank We're you. We're so grateful for that. Yes. Um, we actually thought that in this segment, we would talk about Rick Ross reinvented. Okay. I'm with that all the way. I mean, so uh, what are some of the projects that you're working on that you can share with us? Wow. Well, one of the projects that you're working <laughs> on. <laughs> Let me see which one I want to talk about. Just before I got to the show, you know, I had an interview with, uh, with the writer that's writing my movie script. You know, I'm working with Reggie Hutlin. Wow. He's They're doing a movie. He's going to direct it and, and, and Isn't that uh, good? Uh, uh, produce it. Um, I also have a meeting scheduled with John Singleton for a new TV show he's doing. Uh, I read with, met with Rodney Barnes a few weeks ago about a TV series he's doing, and he wants me to be on. John wants me on. Uh, I just sold my first reality show. So he's, oh, wow. so he's in entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, man. Let me tell you, Did these principles that. that I use to sell drugs... Yes. Wow. Just Universal, smash, Universal economic smash, principles, right? You know, Supply and demand. Is that take, what it's about? It'll take a guy that was illiterate yeah. to where he can go into the courtroom with a lawyer that graduated from Harvard, top of his class, a prosecutor who graduated from Yale, and a lawyer and a judge who was the chief judge in San Diego. And I started going into the courtroom. I remember when I first went to the courtroom and they was having to help me pronounce words and, yeah. and, and figure out what I was trying to say when I'm reading the books. Well, it got to the point where I went in the courtroom and I, and I started dictating what was going on inside the courtroom. Wow. That's the way these principles work. These principles are like that sure, that sound, and, and, and it's phenomenal. With, with you, you know what? I'm a, let me just say this. I am so impressed with you. And I want to tell you really the real reason why you're on this show. Yeah. Yeah. So the color of success, what we're about is having people inspire and motivate other people. And I wrote this show, created this show years ago. Wow. It was, uh, it was probably like in 2008. And uh, I came to my, my partner here. I'm like, look, let's do this. And we start developing this. And it just never was good enough for me. And I was like, I, no, we can't do this. We can't do this. It's not good. This just, it's just not good enough. And she's like, well, what's wrong with it? I'm like, I, I don't know. It's just it's missing something. So I went to lunch. And I sat down. I was on my break at work. And I picked up a Pasadena Weekly. I was at this restaurant called Barney's. Wow. And I said, <laughs> and, and I, I had the Pasadena Weekly, and I said, um, I want a glass of wine with lunch today. And I saw your face. Was I on the front page? On the front page of the <laughs> Pasadena Weekly. <laughs> yes, sure. Now, I didn't know you from Adam, OK? But I was like, oh, there's a black man on there. I'm just going to read this article. Well, this turned out to be like a three-page article. So I'm reading and eating. I learned about your whole story, right? I learned the, the fact that you said, you said, I did not recognize, recognize my name written in cursive. Mm -hmm. That's how illiterate I was. I learned to read when I got to prison. And once I did that, I educated myself with the Wall Street Journal. I learned about economics on a very traditional way at that point in time. He, he said, I could do math like you can believe. I could co convert the metric system. <laughs> I could do this, I could do that, but I just couldn't read. But once I got that reading, I had it down pat. You, and so the interviewer said to you, what gives you the right to think that you can go to these major universities, Ivy Leagues, 
you know, on the East Coast, Stanford, these big universities, and talk about our kids, and you were a drug dealer. And you said because you pay a ton of money for your kids to go to these expensive colleges, and when they graduate, they can't live out their dream. <laughs> you said, I read it, and, you, and, 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 and so she said, well, why is that? You said, I educate them about what to look for, what not to do, and how to harness fear. You said, it's not failure that's not an option. It's fear that's not an option. <laughs> and that is the barrier that, that, that prevents them from living out their dream. That's why they can't materialize your money into education, into their dream, because they're fearful. And you said fear comes in a lot of ways. And you wow. said, you said, <laughs> lots of times you'll say it's just not good enough. Some people mm -hmm. say that, you know, I don't want people to think that I'm crazy or some people are afraid to fail. Wow. And I read that. <laughs> and I came home and I said to my partner, I said, yeah, I said, I read this 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 article about this Freeway Rick guy. I had heard about him, you know, back in the 90s, but I didn't know. And so I started digging and researching and, and, and doing all this research. <laughs> and I thought, I got three degrees. And he's right. Why can't I materialize it? Wow, mm -hmm. that's crazy. You read that, that is why article. You oh, are man. on this show today because she you is. inspired wow. the fruition of the color of success. Of the color of success. You inspired us. You would not believe the people that us. have come up and told Absolutely. me that. Absolutely. I had some stories. Wow. I had a guy, I was at um, at a hemp fest in, in San Bernardino. The first uh -huh. one, I wasn't going to go. I just got off parole. And one of my guys was like, man, you got to go. These people are where you belong. Yeah. These people are going to relate to you. Come out. So I go out, and this guy is following me around with a camera. And I'm like, why are you, you why you follow me? What you you got something right, you want to say right. to me? And then the guy was like, "Yeah." This guy told me he was on crystal meth, mm. and he saw one of my videos, mm -hmm. and it gave him the courage to quit using meth. I wish I, if I could have had instead of him filming me, I wish I could have had somebody mm -hmm. filming both mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. But the story was just so profound, you know, that this guy thought that he was going to die on wow. crystal meth, you know, and and mm -hmm. he was saying that hearing words from me gave him the courage to quit day by day, you know, like. How'd that make you feel? Oh, man, it's like, oh. make me feel like that my life wasn't in vain, you yeah. know. Um, remind me when I went and spoke to Minister Farrakhan and he told me, he said, you may look at your life as being in vain if you don't take it mm -hmm. and use it the way that it's supposed to be used. Mm -hmm. um, and the experience that was given to you Truly Absolutely. was for a reason. Absolutely. And why you were put here on this earth, right? Absolutely. This is phenomenal that you told me that today. Man. <laughs> That's a true story. I remember story. that article. You know, yes. I wasn't even thinking about that article. That mm -hmm. article was written when I first got out of prison. And you know, I hadn't been to an Ivy League school. I don't think when they read that when they wrote that article. Okay. Or maybe I had been to Stanford. Maybe Stanford. Just Stanford. Yeah, you had went to Stanford. Well, you know, I yeah. spoke at Brown University too. And, and that's a semi Ivy League school. And, and no, Brown is an Ivy, Ivy League. League. Total Ivy League. Yeah. Because you know, I made a mistake, right? In in a, uh, when, and I said. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just flattered to be at Yale because my prosecutor went to Yale. <laughs> you said Yale? Yeah, I said You're Yale. You're like... <laughs> and it was like, oh, no, the whole oh, no. It was, it was standing, Hush fell over the audience. The morning, right. And then they, they let me know, oh, no, this ain't Yale. We better than Yale. <laughs> wow, wow. But, but you know, you, I, I, what's, it, what's really important here, Carolyn, tell me what you think about this, is um, the fact that you were in prison and by the time you were released, you already had a plan created and ready to execute, right? Oh, As absolutely. you walked out no, of jail. I was executing it in prison. You were executing. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what is so phenomenal. And I think that's what needs to be shared with uh Everybody. Right, because we Black, wait, white, yellow, green, I don't care. There's we're waiting hope. for a, per a perfect situation, and life is never going to be perfect. perfect. And, and that's why some of our kids have low self esteem with mm -hmm. themselves because they have these visions 
of what they should look like on TV and yeah. how life should be, and life is not like no, that. You know, like that. we're gonna have problems in our life. Mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna hurt. Uh, uh, one of my favorite books, and you know, I'm gonna give them all three of them too. Well, tell yeah, tell us about yeah. the books, definitely. Well, my three favorite books is Think and Grow Rich, As a Man Think, and The Richest Man in Babylon. Uh, and, and inside of those three books, I learned how to convert my past life into the life that I'm living right now. Oh, okay. Uh, from reading those books. I see. Uh, they taught me lessons that I never thought about. They taught me a lesson like, you don't go to a drug dealer and ask him how to make money. Mm. Unless you want to go to prison. Right. <laughs> because he's going to teach you how to He'll sell like, drugs. Uh, yes. And yes, and not only that, but you're going to cover for me too. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm gonna speaking teach you of real books, well. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, what is the first book that you read? You said you read your first book at 28, right? Yes. What was what book was that? The Bible. Malcolm X's Autobiography. Oh, wow. Malcolm X. By Alex Haley. Wow. Okay. And I learned okay. so much from that book. I mean, I saw myself in, in Malcolm's it. book, and you know. I'm gonna say this here right now. Some people are gonna get mad at me. That's okay. No, say what you this do this. What you when say I read you Malcolm's say. book, yes, I thought that I could be better than Malcolm. And that, okay. and, and, but you should because okay. you were created to be, really, your best of whatever you dream it to be. And that was his dream. He, what made him so wonderful is that he could take a look at his journey and say, "I was wrong here, here, and here." Absolutely. But I'm going to correct this, this, and this, yeah. because this is who I am. He had a self-constitution that was so strong, he was like a Marky, Marcus Garvey believer, as he said, you know, if you don't stand for something, you will you fall, fall for, for anything. anything. Absolutely. Right? So my <laughs> next question to you is, with all being said, what you've gone through, how did you find that confidence to grow in to the man that you are today, to be here on our show talking to people about different things that they can do. Well, I've always been themselves. willing to, to, to try things that, that I felt could be right mm -hmm. or just possibly right. Uh, uh, so it was easy for me to start the journey. Uh, Marcelli was the first one to, to really get me to start reading. Okay. You know, started me off. Okay. I had to start over with my cue cards, mm -hmm. with my ABCs, <gasps> A, I, And your phonics. sounds and like everything, phonics. Phonics. I had to start over with my phonics, because what, what he taught <laughs> me was that, that I didn't know my phonics. Well, you should be happy he knew, because a lot of people don't know their don't phonics. Do they that. don't even teach it in the schools. Absolutely, exactly. absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that he taught me my phonics. So you learned the right way. Um, and he started me there, and then once I conquered the reading aspect, uh, it was like, uh-oh, watch out, world. So I summed it up good, right? I can do yeah, you did. <laughs> I can do anything. I can go anywhere, and, and there's nobody that is any better than me. Yeah, absolutely. Now, were you just you were just born to be self motivated? You just psychologically were able to jump over those emotional hurdles of not having a dad, not having the mom there all the time because of the situation you explained. How did you get that brain set right? Well, well, I don't know if I'm, if I'm self-motivated or if I was born with it. We can motivate ourselves. One thing that we have absolute, total control over is how we think okay. mm -hmm. and how we think about situations. Uh, say, for instance, like when I was in prison. I went uh, uh, about four weeks ago and I spoke at a prison mm -hmm. in High Point, okay. uh, uh, North Carolina. And what I showed these guys is how to turn their prison cell into a university. And I could see the lights go off in these guys when I'm sitting there talking Giving to them. Giving them purpose. They just lit up because they understood now that I don't have to be here doing dead time that, that, that I can educate myself. And then uh, I even went even further than that and I went in my pocket and I bought the books, my three books, because the jail didn't have those books in there. Okay. And I went in my pocket and I gave the secretary the money to order the books so that these guys would at least have the books. Uh, it's what I found out about our prison system is that They'll pay $45,000 a year to keep a person in jail, but they're not going to pay $200 to educate them so that they'll never come back. that's part of punishment. Yeah, we're on the punishment. <laughs> now, is that, now, 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 does that create the psychological and emotional bondage? Does that, does that kind of concrete it, you know, like, okay, you're already locked up, but now I got your mind. Absolutely. You only get to put in it what I say. Well, you don't even have to be in jail for them to take your mind. Right. 
I are mean, we are we in that position right now? As a people, I as think a people, we are. I think we are. Have we put ourselves in it in that situation? Well, you know what? We can't say that we put ourselves in any position because we were brought over here in chains. We're the only people in this country that were that, brought, that over, were brought here. over here in chains. We didn't ask to come. And we didn't ask to come. Most <laughs> people that come over here, they they they, they, want they to jump come. on rafts. Yeah. You know, they hike. <laughs> they want to be here. <laughs> Sneak on airplanes. That's right. So, they got so, a green card. Okay. So we've been put in a, in a yeah. totally different position. And I don't think that there's ever been any programs to, they say, rehabilitate us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go to prison, you've been rehabilitated. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we've ever been habilitated. We don't, nobody ever, never taught us the laws and yeah. principles uh, um, for success. So let me okay. ask you this, and then I'm going to move on because I know we want to talk about some uh, policies and in, in, mm -hmm. the whole bit out there. Um, can you tell me, because it bothers me, why us as a group of people, our children and grandkids and the whole bit, why we are magnets to um, get out and exploit our sexuality, you know, sexual preference, in the eyes of people for entertainment in exchange for money. To me, it almost feels like hustling. A am I wrong? No, it Why? is hustling. Where it is. Now, my question is, is that as a group of people, you know, we were, what people don't know, a very conservative group of people before the 80s, before the whole uh, Iran-Contra scandal where Los Angeles gets the name coined the rock cocaine capital of the world, right? Before right. it hit our <laughs> community. African Americans are a very conservative group of people. What, what happened to our parameters? Where's our morals? How do we get it back? Well, what, what, what has happened is TV, the media, has portrayed us in this image. And, and I believe that this is part of the problem why you see so many black men being shot down by police officers because now we've been labeled the problem childs of America. So every time you see a black man on TV, he's wearing his pants sagging, he's a thug, he's a gangster, he's carrying a gun, mm -hmm. he has multiple women. And so now our young girls start to believe that this is the kind of woman the that attracts the male. My man. Mm -hmm. Right. And, so and I need to be on TV letting another one, woman slap me on my behind and doing gyrating and twerking because this is what my man likes because this is what he sings about. Right. Because this is what I see on so TV. So a lot of our information comes from TV. Yes. You know, it, it doesn't come from... We haven't learned that there's been more gold mind out of the mind of a man that can ever come out of the ground yes. and and that a lot of that gold came out of the mind of a black man that somebody else took credit for right. because it, it, it's tough for us before i went to prison i didn't know about malcolm x mm -hmm. you know i didn't know about marcus garvey i didn't know about louis Farrakhan. you know mm -hmm. i didn't know I, I i knew of don king and, and had opportunities <laughs> to to sit with somebody like a don king but i didn't have enough sense to say you know Hey Don, can you teach me the business? How to promote. Yeah. How to yeah. promote a fight. Yeah. And, and and I wanted to be in the fight game, yeah. but I didn't have enough sense to just ask and tell him, hey, I got money. When you don't know that there's information that you need to know, then there's no way that you're gonna get this information because you don't even know that you need the information. Okay. And that's the state that I believe that our young people are in today, and I believe that that's my job to go out and let them know that you need this information and that you should be trying to pursue this information. You know, speaking of young people today. Um, I wanted you to explain to me where you were going out contacting other rappers about uh, a thug culture or a movement. Can you tell, can you tell yeah, me I more spoke about on that? that? I spoke on that. Well, I said that I, I, I read a, a letter when I first got out of prison where they was talking about the record industry was dying. When the internet popped yeah. up, mm -hmm. the record industry started dying. So record labels had, had this big meeting where they all got together and they said, you know what, the record business is dying. What are we going to do with all this money we made from the record business? So they decided to buy penitentiaries. So after they bought penitentiaries, then they had to figure out how are we going to keep them full. So what we'll do is we'll just make gangster rappers, the heroes for all the young black kids in, in America. Oh, so now if you look at who our heroes are, uh, the guy who stole my name, who's never sold drugs, and, and, and a handful of other ones who never sold drugs, you know, who have college degrees, Absolutely. but they play like they're gangsters and they're thugs. They, they go on stage and they play uh, uh, illiterate, and they play like they drink alcohol when they really got tea in the bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, um, mm -hmm. 
they play like they smoke weed and they mm -hmm. don't. So it, it, it creates that uh, mindset to me where is this all just propaganda like the drug business was when mm -hmm. the government played like they didn't want drugs it to is, be? It's, a, it's mm -hmm. a false persona and, it, and, it, and it's glamorizing uh, poverty. Absolutely. And, it's, and, it, and, and it, it's, exploiting, it's exploiting the hardship of black America Absolutely. for a dollar. And and and, now, and then they don't give any of those dollars back. Exactly. <laughs> and so I'm glad uh, that you took that stance um, that on that. Sense. It sounds like that's one of just a gazillion things that you're working on right <laughs> now. Is, I would is. like to talk further even to know what just the rest of us African Americans can do because we're your age. And I, I feel like we're the ones that are responsible for people who are 25, 30, uh, 32 years old right now, the Millennium kids who are out there, when you ask them how they're doing, they're like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm cool. You make like ten dollars an hour, and you cool. No, nah, you ain't you cool. Are and most good of them not and working. You, are not okay. cool. you know the, the, the unemployment rate, especially for black men, is like at Very an all-time high. high. That's right. I think I think if I'm not wrong uh, in, in misquoting the lawyer, my lawyer who gave me my statistics, I think in some cities it's like 40%. It's bad. Yes, it's bad. It's, it's, it is really bad. So we are not good and we are not cool. It's not all good. And not when they shoot you down for right. running from the scene. In the back. And somebody, the back. Needs to tell, somebody needs to tell us and our children and our grandkids that it is not okay and that's acceptable. Me. I'm the one that's going to tell us. We all need to, we need to yes. figure out how to re-educate because we've got to clean this up because we are the group of people that got caught up in the 80s in that scene to where we gave birth to kids and walked off and left them and the system raised them and now they think making $10 an hour mm -hmm. is all good. Well, not worse than that because now they believe that they can go out and rap and make exactly. a lot of money. And make six hundred million dollars, right, right. or dribble exactly. basketball, right. and 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 make, make twenty five million a year. Right. Right. So so now the goal don't become can I go and be a certified electrician or a plumber? You know somebody who makes forty dollars an hour, yeah, thirty dollars an hour. Decent. But I'm going to sacrifice myself, my education, to become this rapper who who's going to be worth six hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. And, and I believe that these are the mindsets that they have put our kids in, or the drug dealer. And we've got to stop Unrealistic. it. Unrealistic. We absolutely are. What about your book? Is your book a my guide book is on gonna how to stop do that? It. Tell it's us gonna about stop the book. It. Tell they us about it my the book. book. What's my the book name of the book? My book is calling it The Game Changer. Uh, some people don't like this name. Some people call it The Ghetto Bible. Okay. Guys Ghetto in the Bible. streets. You, you know, who's really been supporting this book has been street guys who mm -hmm. actually live the life they're living the life that I lived back in the day. They're living it right now. And uh, they've been buying my books by the tens. It's a good I, I, read. I read the internet. <laughs> I, I saw where it's been quoted that this is a book that everybody should have in their library. Freeway Rick Ross, The Untold Autobiography by Rick Ross and Kathy uh, Scott. Um, hard to find book, you know very why? Very hard. Because I'm self-published. Because you're self-published, that's own right. I my that's book. Right. I want to be a free Negro. So if you want to <laughs> know more about how to evolve, how to reinvent yourself, what not to do, uh, you want to know uh, what your kids should be looking for, what you should be looking for to Absolutely. prevent them to stay staying out of uh, the cocaine use, cocaine too. distribution, mm -hmm. and the gangs, then this is a book that everybody should probably read. A teacher wrote me. This teacher read. wrote me from, uh, what was she from? Uh, I can't think of what city, but she told me that your book should be in every single it, school in the country. She said, yes, this is an anti-gang book. I said, an anti-gang book? Because I never wrote it to be an anti-gang book. We got we, 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 we to get it in there. Um, I'm going to tell you something. It's been fabulous having you on the show. We do something really special. Um, it's a very special ceremony, and Carolyn uh, does this ceremony for our <laughs> guests. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's, that, that is absolutely right. Every um, guest that has been on the show, uh, there's a canvas right behind you. They sign our canvas. Uh, we have a box of... Markers, colors, the color pencils, of success. Your color, your journey. You got green in there. Yeah, we do. We I got love green. Greens. Okay. <laughs> then I will tell you. Is this we, green? And oh, no, here. You know what? Marker. 
How about that green? All right. Is that you want, sign it do, right you want, now? do you want do you want do you want many yes. green colors or you just want that green color? You just color? want one green. This is good. Okay. 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 Yeah, green. So you this, could sign it. You could scribble enough. on it. You do whatever you want. Whatever you want to write on that. And while you do that, we're going to actually pour a toast for you. That's right. Oh my goodness. When you sign our canvas, your color is representing your uh, spiritual journey. It is really the color of the essence of your spirit that you are leaving behind here. Um, with us at the Color of Success, our audience, uh, they get to see it. And it's such a good spirit, we want it to rub off on everyone and we want to keep it ourselves. And so we, you know, we salute you. Thank really, you. we do for your the reinventing of yourself and the positive um, influence that you are having on the community. Uh, right now. Thank you guys for yeah. having the courage. Oh, I mean, absolutely. you know, you don't see me on, on mainstream TV and you would think, you know, with somebody with, with, with and, and, and I'm not just saying this because it's me, but you don't have many people who was totally illiterate and it's all documented, not one of those illiterate guys who graduated from college. I was really <laughs> illiterate to go from there to go and speak at Brown University in That's Stanford. That's serious. That is serious. Those are the kind of stories that, that our kids need to hear about and mainstream should be talking about it, but they won't. That's correct. To Rick they Ross, and reinvented. To the reinvention of To the colors of success. <laughs> into the color of success because it was you, really, that helped bring this into this. fruition. Wow. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm. Tell us why you picked green, though. Money. Money? Oh, wow. Absolutely, money. Economics. <laughs> I'm focused on, one of the things that uh, I know about myself is once I get focused, I stay focused on okay. what it is that I'm trying to do. Okay. okay. Right now, we need businesses. Yes, we do. In the black community because people hire people that look like them. They yeah. do. And, and it's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if, if I got a job, the first person I'm going to hire is my brother. My brother mm -hmm. unemployed. You can forget about getting that job before he gets it. And then after him, I'm going to hire my sister and then my cousin and then my uncle and my auntie. And then I hire a friend. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the way businesses ran in general. And, and without us becoming business oriented, then our men are going to be unemployed and we're going to keep having the problems that we have. Hmm. We're going to talk to you a little further today. We're going to talk about what maybe we can maybe do to get uh, uh, the president uh, to kind of take a closer look at the black community. Maybe you have some great ideas. We're going to even further this discussion. Other guests will come on to add um, on to this issue. We want to thank you so thank much you. Thank for you being all for here. having me. Thanks for having the courage first oh my goodness. to invite me on. And oh, my goodness. You read that article. Oh, yes. So I know yes, once you did. read that article, your courage went up. You're like, man, I ain't I got did. nothing to lose. I did. And, I, and I'm going to read the book, but I'm going to tell you what I did. I read the article, and I, I loved it, but then I told Carolyn, I go, you know what? I, I'm scared because I don't want the government to get us. I said, so we're just not going to ask him too many hard questions. <laughs> Until next time, I'm on Tricia Averitt. And I'm Carolyn. And this is The Color of Success. <laughs>